Now let's talk about commission versus barbershop for a barber. We're gonna do barber edition here. Real quick, shout out to Pi County. This video is sponsored by Pi County and 245. Pi County is a full service accounting firm where we help you guys build wealth. It's not about filing taxes. That's the least of our worries. We're trying to set you up for long-term success so that every year you have a better year and you're building towards wealth. 245 Innovative Products here to elevate the barbering industry. So shout out to those two sponsors of which I own. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about commission boot rent for a barber. So you are looking for a barber, you're gonna work at a shop and you're trying to figure out what concept is best for you. And there's going to be people who say booth rent every single time. And I'm going to tell you, it depends. It depends on the barbershop, what they have to offer, what kind of roadmap or blueprint they have for you in order to continue to succeed and what your long-term goal is. I got no problem with people working at great clips, sports clips. If that's what they want to do, they love it. The other perspective is what if your goal is to open 30 sports clips? You want to become a franchisee, work in the business, learn it, master it, make sure your financials are healthy and make sure you're putting yourself in a position to be able to become a franchisee. There's two angles there. You either just love the job. It's cool. And, and you like the culture and you don't need to make a bunch of money, your significant other or something, or maybe you, you have other means of money. There's all kinds of reasons why people would stick with great clips and sports clips. When I was younger, less wise, I just blanket statement. It's stupid to work there. And I, I disagree with that. Now there's people who work their way up and become franchisees and more multi-millionaires because of these stores you got to remember these stores are top 20 franchise franchises in the world every single year you know they're doing something right and those are i think salary based shops with tips it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish the last video we talked about business models where it might be you might want to work at a shopping center in beverly hills and the rents are crazy but shoot the barbershop or the salon they're charging 150 dollars a haircut and 150 dollars a haircut you're earning 60 percent, and you're doing 30 haircuts a week at 150 bucks. So let's do the math on that. So that's $4,500 in one week. Let's assume they're taking 40%. You still made $1,800. I get, and that doesn't include tips. I guarantee you these guys are crazy tippers. Let's assume they're paying you on average $20 a tip. So 150, you're getting 170. So that's an extra $600 in tips, right? Plus a lot of times these guys actually buy product. So, you know, that might be another 500 bucks a month on that. So you could be starting out coming into the, these type of establishments, making 10 grand a month, just like that with no clientele because they're established. They got a brand 10 grand a month after commissions. If you're at a booth rent shop, you've never touched 10 grand. Why would I tell you not to take that job? <laughs> why would you not take that job? You guys got to do the math here. Let's continue. Let's let's break this down even further. So I don't even know if I spell commission right, but bear with me. Bear with me. Part of what you guys are not seeing is that when you are commissioned and let's assume you're a W-2, they're doing it the right way. You're not a contractor, right? If you're an independent contractor, I'm not saying they can't do that. If you were on W-2 on commission, you probably would be better off. Kind of. It just depends the type of person you are if you're the type of person that you're on point with your finances you get an accounting you're responsible you separate uh business income from personal expenses and stuff like that then you're probably better be better off self-employed with commission then all you would need to do is hire pie accounting you would pay less taxes but let's just assume you're the typical barber that is commission self-employed versus w-2 Okay, and this is what it would look like. Your typical barber is going to pay a 15.3% self-employment tax. That is half as employment tax. This is pretty much for your FICA, where if you were W-2, your employer would pay half of that 15.3% and you would pay the other half of it. So let's assume that's on 7.65 or something like that. That's what you would pay on your income versus the 15.3. So right off the bat, if you're making 10 grand a month, $120,000 a year, you're saving about $9,000 in taxes. Again, there's way more variables than this. I'm just trying to give you simple math, all right? Simple math, where if you were in this situation, you're responsible for 15.3 of that 120 at 18K, the full amount. This does not include federal taxes, and depending on the state you're in, state taxes. This is why we tell you guys, pay the three to, the 335 to Pi County and you will save so much money. It's not even funny because we'd put you under self-employment, we'd put you on payroll, we'd come up with some tax strategies to lower your taxable income while keeping your bankable income high enough to still be able to get, go get loans. That's the goal for us. 
right? Try and do that stuff on your own. That's like starting from scratch, learning how to cut your own hair and then starting to cut your own hair. Like it's going to be a long process, a more expensive process than you probably think. And we talked about opportunity costs in the last video. You have an opportunity cost. You could be studying tax law or you could be focusing on your business and increasing the revenues and then letting the professionals help you keep as much of that revenues as possible. So there are pros here. You guys can see there are pros here. Not just that, but you don't have to worry about hiring Pi Accounting. If you have a W-2, the barbershop owner takes care of that. You get that W-2. With a W-2, you can file your taxes with H&R Block, right? It's very, very simple to do those tax returns. I wouldn't even tell you to get with Pi Accounting unless you start to take some of this income and invest it into other businesses, into other avenues like real estate, stuff like that. Then I would consider talking to Pi Accounting. This is what people don't understand. If you're commissioned self-employed, you're getting taxed at the highest rate. It's probably the worst situation you can be in unless you get with an accounting firm that knows what they're doing. Then you would actually pay less taxes than these guys, but less stress, less uh, work to get all that stuff in order. Hopefully that's making sense. Now, if you're in a barbershop that's charging market rates, let's say market rate in your area is 30 bucks and the booth rent shops are charging 30 bucks too, you know, you're probably better off going with booth rent in this scenario, unless you can't find a shop that's going to help you ramp up. And so what I mean by that is like in our shops, we start you out at booth rent we think you can afford because our barbers when they first start if they make less than 1200 bucks or a thousand bucks that's weird that's not normal you know most of our guys they start out first week they make 1500 bucks with zero clientele but we know that you know we can give them a discounted rent and every two weeks we can raise their rent until they're at full rent but there's barber shops that don't do that they just want you to pay full rent first week it depends on that scenario too i see a lot of people that say commission's better to start off well what if you get into commission and you're in a 50 50 situation right or 60 40 situation and you're at 30 bucks you know you start there you get established and the shop owner won't budge you got to stay at 60 40. that's not a better scenario than just taking the hit up front and being at booth rent right but if you can start in this scenario and work your way up to a model that's more favorable because now you, you've built your clientele and let's say they'll move 50 50 right to 60 40 to 70 30 to maybe they go to booth rent right that's a much favorable situation and that's something that 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 i would be okay with but if they're telling you're gonna be 50 50 or 60 40 no matter what there's no way around it that's that's gonna become a problem because the only way you're gonna be able to grow once you get booked is if you leave and that sucks right you don't want to be the, the barber that bounces around different locations and my shop owners i wouldn't why would you want to have you know a turnover and lose your superstars who have the ability to build a full clientele you guys got to think long term and think man the better your team you could be the guys like portland you could be like portland portland trailblazers who keep damien Lillard, but they don't bring no talent around them. And so Dan Lillard is just there existing. They got no chance at winning anything, at winning a championship. Why would you want to run that franchise? The only person that's winning in that is the, the owners who are making a bunch of money, right? And that sucks. You got, you know, now Damian Lillard, he's getting frustrated because his team ain't winning. He wants to leave too. I don't know about you guys, but I want a dynasty. I want to be Golden State. I want to keep my, my superstars. But I realize that's not that common or else you wouldn't see the same teams in the championships every year. There's a scenario as far as commission is concerned. It depends, right? It depends on the scenario. You got to also understand what comes with it, right? Because obviously, booth rent barbers have more expenses. They have more expenses. And most booth rent barbers who do not have a reputable accounting firm that knows what they're doing with self-employed in individuals, most of them are paying crazy taxes taxes. If you're a self-employed individual and let's say your booth rent, let's do commission versus booth rent. Let's say commission's 40 bucks, 40 bucks. That's what we're charging per cut. Right away, you're going to start in a commission shop and you're going to be cutting 50 heads a week. And it's going to take you a while to do that booth rent wise because booth rent shops don't have as much revenue as a commission shop. So they don't have as much resources to run ads and, and do marketing, that type of thing, right? A lot of times commission shops are busier up front where booth rent shops a lot of times are slower up front. But let's just assume it's apples to apples and you're doing 50 haircuts a week, you know, right when you start. I would tell you most booth rent shops are probably not going to do that. Mine do but that's because we have built this thing. We're, we're going on our ninth location, right? So we've really built this. We've really learned this. We have systems. We have brand equity in our in our city. And so barbers can come in and leverage that. But let's just assume it's apples and apple. You're going to pay that 15.3 here because most of you guys are not with a pie accounting. I'm not saying other accounting firms can't do that, but why would you go to other another accounting firm when you know this is the accounting firm that knows exactly what they're doing and they're going to put you in game, right? In this scenario, you're going to pay that 7.65. Let's just assume this is a W-2 commission. 
commission. Now, if you were a self-employed commission, you're definitely going to be better off in this scenario. But let's just assume this is a W-2 situation. This guy's at, let's just say 70-30, 70-30 situation. Let's do the math here. The average ticket for both of these is going to be 50 bucks because I mean, no barber only does haircuts and most barbers get tips. So we're going to assume it's 50 bucks. So 50 times 50 people a week is 2,500 bucks a week. Ooh, making money, boy. Y'all making money. And let's say you work 50 weeks out of the year, you took two weeks off. 50 times 2,500, that's 125,000. Boy, they say barbers can't make money. They've been trying to say Jordy and didn't make 120 his first year out of barber school. He did, he did. He's gonna do a lot more this year, trust. All right, so we're at 125K. Let's just assume both of these federal tax rate is let's say 17%. We're gonna say this one has self-employment 7.65. This one's 15.3, okay? And we're gonna assume there's zero state tax, even though if you're in California, sorry. If you're in New York, sorry. If you're in Oregon, sorry. If you're in New Jersey, sorry. If you're in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, sorry. If you're in Texas, Florida, Nevada, good for you, you got no state tax. So the one thing we're missing here is expenses. Equipment, supplies, clippers, that type of thing, three grand in expenses because you bought some shares or something too. Plus booth rent, let's say you were paying, let's just say 200 and they give you one week off per year. That's 10,200 plus we said three grand for expenses plus your accounting firm, it's another four grand. So let's just call this 17K in expenses, all write-offs where you're at 70-30 here with the commission scenario and your expenses is 37,000. Now, let's say you bought clippers and stuff too. You know, you don't have to spend as much because the barbershop is covering it, but let's add another thousand dollars for your clippers. So you went and bought some, a few pair of clippers. So we're at $38,000. After expenses, your real income is 87,000. 108 is your new income after expenses here. But of this, we have a 24, 0.65% tax rate. And of this, we have a 32.3% tax rate. So what does that look like? 35K, 21K, 66K is what this guy took home. Isn't that crazy? All those expenses and stuff, insane. And then this guy, and he made 73,000. The difference is $7,000 for Boof Rent. Boof Rent wins. Now, remember, in this scenario, much less responsibilities. You don't really need a, a, an accountant. You don't really need to make sure you're separating business from, from personal. You don't have to keep up with receipts, that type of thing. So that's why I said in, in the last video about booth rent versus commission, that's why I said for the guys who are just chilling, you don't really wanna have to deal with the entrepreneur stuff. You just wanna clock in, clock out and do your thing. This is a good scenario for you. You don't wanna be responsible for your finances and it's not really a thing for you. Be honest with yourself. You never watch videos about finances. You don't read books about it you're not trying to get better at it you're not looking for investments you're not saving your money this is the better scenario for you if you're an entrepreneur and you and you want to be in control of your finances and you want to grow your wealth and all that stuff this is a better scenario and this is apples and apples this is apples and apples very seldom is it apples and apples it's usually apples apple and oranges what if the commission shop you know, they're established and they're charging $60 a cut. What if the commission shop, you right away, you're making money, but the booth rent shop, it's going to take you a year, two years to get to this number. If you don't have a system in place or you're not, or you don't have an exact plan or you don't, you're not in the right ship or the right team, this might take you a year or two to get to of which this guy's been making money. He's got a whole year head start on you. And so for you to catch up to this guy, your break even point might be year five before you catch up with this guy's net income. And what I mean by that is, let's look at this. Let's say he made 87K his first year, 66K take home his first year. And your first year, your take home was 30K. You know, that's very, very possible. That's probably pretty common. If after year one, you're up 7K on this guy every year after that, it would take you at least four years before you made more income than him. Because if you do four times 66, what do you get? So in four years, he would have made 264,000, where if you lost a year, let's say three years, you made 73. So you're gonna do three times 73, plus that first year, you only did 30, 219,000. Guys, you would need five years before you made more money than this guy. Do you want to be there for five years? Do you want to have your own shop open? 
before those five years? If you say in three years you want to open up your own shop, what's the better scenario? This one. If you're thinking long term, if you're really doing all the math, but if you're going to get in a shop that's popping right away, this is the better scenario. Hopefully that's making sense. That's why it drives me crazy when people be in like the 245 Facebook group and just be like, boot threat is always better. You're getting scammed if you're, you guys don't understand all of the variables here. You can't just use a blanket statement and say that. So hopefully this was eye opening. You know, this was right off the top of my head. I didn't have like a curriculum planned or anything like that. This wasn't well thought out. This is just me kind of brainstorming on pen and pad. I might've missed some things, but I just wanted to at least the goal here was to share with you guys. It's not as easy as saying booth rent is better than commission for a bar. You got to know what your long term goals are. What do you plan on doing in the next two to three years, the next three to five years? What's your break even point? What's the scenarios you're looking at? Uh, what are they charging per per cut? What's the commission split? Right. If in this scenario you're at 50 50, you're probably 50 50 commission. You're probably better off here. If you're at 60 40, you might still be better off here. I don't know. You would have to do the math. Listen, if you're interested in, in skyrocketing your income, you want a, a blueprint, you want an exact plan, a roadmap um, to build wealth in this industry, to be successful and reach your goals in this industry. We have the Six Figure Barber Mentorship. The goal with the mentorship is to help you increase your income. The goal with Pi Accounting is to help you organize it, look financially fit and build your wealth and have guidance, kind of like a personal trainer in that realm. And then 245 is for you to uh, buy yourself gifts on Christmas. No, I'm just kidding. That's for you to be, use the in most innovative products that'll elevate you in your business with convenience. It might help you with speed. It might help you uh, create better styles, build clientele or sell products to your clients. I don't know. But with that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we're going to keep them coming, man. I'm fired up. I'm excited to keep dropping videos. We got some tutorials coming up. So look out for those.